date, a future date, when the, the planets as seen in the crop circle um, mirror of our solar system next arrive in that position. So Whoa. that's, uh -huh. it's, it was a date that wasn't known, it, it wasn't, that oh. didn't have to be known, but we now have that array on the ground, it's being calculated at 2102, the year 2102, 101 I beg your pardon, and a specific date in that year when the stars will align to that. And then, with yes, that behind us, we had the other Earth developments. Isn't in that set. No, I, I, configuration. So you know that that that's is a the point. prediction. Yeah. Well, I, I, I actually I'd like to address that because mm -hmm. um, I presented a very small presentation to some junior mm -hmm. children uh, in Connecticut last week, mm -hmm. and I was almost sorry actually that I had brought this particular development up because the first thing. About a hundred children saw it in that auditorium there was indeed, as you have said, <laughs> the planet Earth uh -huh. was not there. Yeah. And that caused really quite a reaction that came back to me, and I felt mm -hmm. very responsible for having uh, presented them with a problem which they immediately immersed themselves in and were making many suggestions like a comet is going to hit us or something of this kind. But if I could suggest that that is one way of looking at it, mm -hmm. that is one interpretation, but equally it could, and this has come from science in, in suggesting that some external factor has been responsible for putting it there and it simply is the handshake of saying we know you are that planet. You are on that ring which we've taken out. That's our way of saying we know with with that knowledge we know that's you so that is another way well, of looking at it attention. that's positive well that was colin um <coughs> yes, yeah, he's uh -huh. just a wonderful person yeah he travels all over well i i noticed in there that he said that um the um uh, there were several universities funding their work they're mm -hmm. the scientists they're they're doing this work but uh, who funds you when you go on your universal trips and things. What, what happens? <laughs> how, how can you do your research and work if you know if there's no funding? Um, I wouldn't really suggest this to everybody. Um, I just go, you know, and make mm -hmm. it up as I go along. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, some of the other people in, in, in like Eilis in, in the other clip, of course, Basti now he he has slideshows and so he has a little money coming in. Mm -hmm. Uh, that and what the Margaret Thatcher um, government gives them for the actual research. Uh, I believe India is giving a little occasionally oh, to, uh -huh. to the ones in England, but like Eilis and myself and Brenda, if we had lived in a, in a tent, uh, we couldn't have paid for the heat. And, and so it's just all a labor of love. All our time goes in there and every penny that we have. I know, and that's, that's very difficult when mm -hmm. you're trying to do the right thing and you have to struggle to do it, mm -hmm. so. It's a lot yeah. of faith. A lot of faith, mm -hmm. yes. Go forward with a lot of faith, yes. A lot, and some of us write Definitely. books, and doesn't mean we sell enough to, you know, to make ends meet, but it's just that when we come here, we have a mission. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so we just, you know, say, hey, help. And uh, <laughs> usually, you know, we, we do get help along the way from, mm -hmm. sometimes from people or mm -hmm. uh, scratch tickets. Um, yeah, and scratch tickets. Well, that's yes, how I bought huh? my, uh, you know, it's not really mm -hmm. mine, but that's how the the um, RV became, uh, you know, came along with right, that scratch Right, absolutely, ticket, yeah. it did, yes. That's and right. all I knew, I was supposed to go and mm -hmm. on a certain day and at the last you, minute. You always follow your guidance and that's mm -hmm. very important. Uh, we're, we're talking about your, about your trips, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I know you went on a trip and you actually got to go to some crop circles here in the United States. Yeah, accidentally, like everything mm -hmm. else. Um, I think I wanted to show, if you don't mind, I want yeah. to show mm -hmm. Eilis's, um, it's a combination clip of Eilis and Busty Taylor. Mm -hmm. And the reason I stuck uh, Busty in the middle there is because they're talking about the Chehalis formation. And mm -hmm. Eilis at one time lived in Great Mounds, which is uh, for those the friends that's not here. Oh, right. uh, mm -hmm. That's about 30 miles south from where we are right now. Mm -hmm. And so I inserted Busty in there because, uh, so you could have a visual of what it looked from the top. Mm -hmm. And um, it, in the gentleman that Busty makes reference to about the gentleman he couldn't acknowledge for the picture, that was Agbar. And he oh. used to own a store up down in uh, 
Centralia? Centra Chehalis, yeah. Oh, Chehalis, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's who, mm -hmm. who gave him that picture. And also, it's, imp it's important that, that people, um, I want to bring it to their attention. When Eilis talks about this amber ball and the hidden, and the hidden skip, um, that's really important because she's the expert, because that will bring me to something that I can share with you on a personal uh, note there. You've so experienced it that, that yourself, the skip. The skip, yeah. I, I brought some pictures for you mm -hmm. so you can comprehend what that looks like. Uh, and, and so maybe we should play um, Eilis's and Busty's okay. clips and, uh, you know, to explain mm -hmm. where, how we arrive. She seems to have quite a bit of expertise and she has her own hypothesis about what happened. Yeah, happens. she wrote a book. Mm -hmm. Wonderful person. Yeah, she's yeah. down in, in California now and, oh. and people buy her plane tickets and, you know, so she gets to go every year. And by the way, those clips were, they were all filmed in 1996, I believe, so they are a few years mm -hmm. old. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's fine. That's so good. maybe we can look at that. Okay. Yeah. Interacting at a particular frequency. And the denser, the slower, the more solid. Mm -hmm. The faster, the more, in our terms, ephemeral, the more insubstantive it becomes, lighter. And I believe that the circles are holding the highest frequencies on the planet at this point. And by our willing interaction with them as we step into a crop circle, our frequencies are being accelerated, our frequencies are being raised. And what that enables us to do by raising our frequencies is to access more of the greater reality, truths, information, mm -hmm. and to work with it and to incorporate it and to ground it and to work with it here, whether it's in the physical sciences, whether it is in the stuff that John Anthony West is doing and the old stuff is coming out now, it is resurfacing and it's helping us to remember our past, whether it is the pyramids, um, or if you're working from the metaphysical aspects and the gifts that we are receiving, the miracles that are coming into everybody's lives. So many people have extraordinary experiences, not just with the lights and the UFOs and, and the crop circles, mm -hmm. but miracles that they can't explain and that even the Pope has been um, chastised by the Vatican because he says you're, they say that you have um, confirmed too many miracles. He's, oh. he's ordained, he, he is, what do you call it when you... Uh, he acknowledged too many are, are happening now, right? Yes. <laughs> or they, according to them, too many. A thousand many is too many yeah. miracles to <laughs> have in one, one pope's lifetime. Yes, so it's just oh. overwhelmed. We're being overwhelmed. And many mm -hmm. people are having the gifts within them awakened for healing, for learning, for teaching. And yeah. I think that the circles have a, like, are the umbilical cord from the greater reality mm -hmm. into our earth. And this energy can be tapped by anybody from any discipline who wants to access that energy, and it helps them to be creative in ways that they had never considered before. Well, we've seen some of the beautiful things that they've helped people create, not only are some musical forms, yeah. uh, but artwork and jewelry and carvings, and people are taking them and then, I think, displaying them so that all of us hopefully can appreciate and have a look at them because not every one of us gets a chance like you do to walk in them. Yes, and as long, I think that's the most important thing is to mm -hmm. just get the pictures and to mm -hmm. hold the energies precisely, not to alter them and be creative, although that's certainly another facet of it, but mm -hmm. if to share exactly what they are and the aerial pictures or etchings or whatever, but very precisely measured and carried those energies, and then to share them. Like, uh, for example, there's a, res uh, a networker who builds pipe organs. He creates pipe organs. And within the design of the pipe mm -hmm. organ, he has incorporated the crop circle, several of the formations to which he is drawn. And the people who are listening to the music really don't know what these strange what patterns they're are, at, uh -huh. but they're there, and they're being sharing the energy. Wonderful crop circles. And this is your work, and you're going to show us some slides now that sort of walk us through how you analyze them and what's going on in the crop circle formation. What this deals with is specifically how I have learned the energies, and I believe that they're sound mm -hmm. and heat, and maser heat and wind, how they are used to actually physically lay the crop. Mm -hmm. And 
it's not like I came to the circles with this already in mind that I'm going to use the circles mm -hmm. to prove my hypothesis, but it's by studying the lays, which I believe hold the secrets of the transmission. If you're a stalk of wheat standing in a field and you wind up like this, mm -hmm. what energies Let's might show work one on of you? These too, yeah. you brought back. This is what you love to call a blown node. <laughs> right. This is certainly a bent mm -hmm. node, and it's it's. Uh, Angled at a very beautiful 90 degrees, a clear 90 degrees, and the note is elongated. And we'll show you in just a second here on the back board, we have mm -hmm. some uh, examples of some elongated nodes. And the other interesting thing about this is that there's a crease about maybe three quarters, maybe an inch below the uh, node here. And the crease runs, as the head is up that way, it runs from the top left to the lower right. And that indicates a counterclockwise spiraling that this has done. Mm -hmm while it was in its softened state. Many, many stalks this year are having, are showing this, mm -hmm. and they're blown, oftentimes they're up here, they're higher, and they're bent and spiraled. But still, here it's lower. they are bent. There is a crease. In it's a crease, mm -hmm. and the, the, uh, there's a common misconception that all yeah. of the stalks are curved and they're mm -hmm. all unbroken. This is not true. It, mm -hmm. Sometimes you can find them like that, but in general, um, they will all show a crimp of some kind in the States and in England. Also, you will find them curved. This is true. And you'll find blown nodes in some and not in others. And not in You will find one. elongated mm -hmm. nodes, some more to, to more of a degree and some to, to less of a degree. But the crimpings and the bendings are not indicative of mechanical, human mechanical intervention. Mm -hmm. This is a part of the, the formative process, and you can find them in all formations. If we look on the back board, some of the uh, sizes and the shapes of the stalks after they have come out of a formation versus the control samples are very clearly and beautifully uh, back enacted yeah, back yeah. here. Um, if you can get tight on this, uh, the apical nodes here, in each of these dark areas in the center, there are holes. Mm -hmm. These are the control nodes, and the control nodes are taken from outside of the formation and sometimes from quite a distance away, progressively further and further away, sometimes maybe an eighth or a quarter of a mile in the same field, the same crop. It has to be the same. And you can see that these crops, these nodes rather, are not, they do not have the same darkened center, the opening, and what causes that opening we'll go through here in, in just okay. a moment, mm -hmm. uh, what I believe causes the opening. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is one of the anomalies that we're finding, or the blown nodes. Another one up here on number one, um, the seeds from within the circle are desiccated. The water has been totally sucked out of them. While the seeds from the control are very full of moisture and normal, normal mm -hmm. looking. Nevertheless, when you look at them in this bottom 6A top row and the 6B down here, the top is the formation and the B is the control. Now, in, in this case, the formation stalks are smaller Mm -hmm. And it depends whether they're going to have an extra burst and go more, grow more hardly, more robustly than the control stocks, or if they lag behind the control stocks, it depends mm -hmm. on what time of, the, of its growing cycle All it's hit the by season. the energies. Mm -hmm. um, if it's hit when it's very young, it hasn't quite developed a, uh, uh, to the, you know, its mm -hmm. full hardiness, and it takes a little bit longer for it to catch up. On the other hand, even though the seeds are desiccated, and these seeds would not be expected, to be to do well to grow mm -hmm. at all because they look totally emaciated nevertheless um, in the later stages they have a, a tendency of, of extra burst and after 10 days then the control stocks will get caught caught catch up to the growth spurt so they'll both be about the so same after 10 days so it really depends on the mm -hmm. phase of the seed development the anthesis stage if it's before or after that with regard to how they're going to grow um, when they're sprouted. And Dr. Levengood incorporates the sprouting in all, mm -hmm. of the, uh, in all of his tests. That's the second part that he does. The first part, he measures the node lengths here. And in number four, the node on the left here is a normal node. And you can see the band, the darker band, is there and there. Here, the node length is almost twice as large. You can see how it, and it's bent. You see how it's curved. So the node lengths are consistent, consistently expanded in a formation. They are, they are consistently 
the same in, in the control stocks from outside of the formation. So that's one of the things to look for. Again, down here you can see the formation seeds, very small, tiny little seeds here compared with the control seeds that are very healthy and, and normal looking. Yet these seeds will sprout and they do very well. And they still do, yeah. Yeah, that's and right. they grow well. So this is one, uh, one phase of uh, Dr. Levengood's work and the plotting of the, uh, the changes, the percentage of change. In one formation, for example, this is a sample report here. 